Hello, in this modern OpenGL video, we're going to be looking at transformations. We're going to be using the OpenGL math library, which is sometimes abbreviated to GLM for the transformations, because use it for transformation, you need to use vectors, matrices, and GLM handles a lot of that in the back end for you. So you just call a method like translate to rotate, and it'll do the appropriate matrices and vector transformations for you which is fantastic but i would recommend go to learn opengl.com and open.gl i've got some great written resources what the and this what these video tutorials are based upon that showcase all the different vectors and matrices and how to use them and it goes into more depth about the mathematics behind that so if you're interested i would definitely recommend checking that out so first thing is first is we need to install GLM. I'm not going to show you the exact process simply because it's very similar to installing the other frameworks that you've installed, whether it's GOFW, SDL or SFML. So as an extra task, I want you to try and install it yourself. We'll be here if you need any help, feel free to comment on this video or message us on sonarlearning.co.uk, which is our free education platform. But essentially what you need to do is if you just type in GLM OpenGL into Google, go to this GLM website, and there's I would say two ways to do it. So if you're on Mac, the easy way is once you've got homebrew installed, which you probably have if you watch the Mac tutorial setup videos, just do brew install GLM and then you can just include it normally, and then you'll be good to go in via terminal this is. And if you're on Windows, I'll just download this. I've already got it downloaded here. So if we go to GLM once you've extracted it. And what you want to do is go to this GLM folder and copy and paste this somewhere where you copied your GLEW and GOFW or SDL or SFML folder and link it the same way. Once you've done that, you'll be all good to go. So go and check out the setup video. You should have enough information in there to set it up. If you don't or if you're stuck, feel free to ask because that is what we are here for but hopefully you can do it yourself because it's a great way of learning and advancing your knowledge so once you've done this the first thing we're going to do is actually go to our vertex shader we need to update this slightly so we need to create a let me zoom in a bit, in a bit. yeah that should be fine we need to do uniform mat Four, so this is a matrix four by four transform semicolon and what we want to do is go to the GL position and just multiply all of this by transform and that's it for the vertex shader for the fragment shader we don't need to do anything so we can go to main.cpp and where we're going to apply it is in between using our shader and activating the texture right here so actually no sorry my yeah yeah actually sorry yeah and that's where we're going to do so we're going to do it right here and zoom in as usual so you can see let's get the number lines so to, yeah the first thing we want to do is actually create the transformation that we want to apply so uh, before we even do that we need to include the header files so without the header files we can't do much so the header files that we require are, do, 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 do. I'm including it before the shader, but you can do it after. This is just a personal preference of mine. So hash, include angle brackets, because it's part of your includes now, because you've either done brew on Mac, or you've linked it like you would have something like GLEW or GOFW. Forward slash GLM dot HPP hash include GLM for slash GTC for slash matrix underscore transform dot HPP hash include GLM for slash GTC for slash type underscore PTR HPP and I'm just going to confirm that this compiles so the appropriate headers have been included it looks a-okay to me yep that's fine the only reason it's not showing anything anymore is because we added this extra code so 
for our vertex shader, the transformation, but the transformation hasn't been handled yet, which we're going to do right now. So first of all, in the transformation, what we're going to actually be doing is just creating the transformation. So we're going to do, 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 do can I zoom in a bit more? Yeah, I should be okay. We're going to do GLM colon colon mat for I'm just going to call it transform semicolon and we'll do transform equals GLM colon colon translate and for the translate first of all we need to specify which mate four by four matrix we're going to be using so it's transform and now we're specifying the vector. So this is GLM colon colon vec3. So this takes three parameters, the x, y, and z parameter. And this is zero. I'm going to put 0 0.5f. Remember the values range between negative one and one for now. Negative 0.5f and 0.0f because we're not doing any depth at the moment in these tutorials but we will get onto that as well now we're going to do transform equal glm don't worry it's going to be adding this as well it's not going to just be overwriting it we're going to do rotate and for the matrix we're going to specify transform again for the angle how much we want it to rotate by because we don't want it just to rotate once and it just be rotated we want it to constantly rotate what we're going to do is G L F W get time. So this is going to be the amount of time that has passed since G L F W has been initialized. Again, I want to keep these tutorials as framework independent as possible. So what I've done is I've got the appropriate links for G L F W. You'll use this method for S D L. You'll use the S D L get ticks method, and for S F M L you'll use the get elapsed time method like so so i'll put all these links in the description so you can read more about it because i'm just giving you a brief explanation but it'd be good if you read upon it so you can learn a bit more about it so let me just zoom in a bit yeah i should do and now we need to oh forgot about one thing we're going to cast this to gl float gl float and we're going to time this so it's actually going to be moving at a certain speed so i'm going to put negative 5.0 so this will rotate one way if you do a positive number it'll rotate the other way and try experimenting with this value so increasing it will make you go faster reducing it will make you go slower simple stuff so for this we're going to put glm colon colon vec3 and for the vector all you do is specify what axes you want to rotate around. So you either put 1.0f or 0.0f. 0.0f means you don't want it to rotate around that axis. So 0.0f means don't rotate around the x-axis. Don't rotate around the y-axis. And we want it to rotate around the z-axis. The reason I've chosen z is because at the moment we're not doing anything in 3D. So around the z-axis it'll just look like it's a 2D transformation. So now that we've actually created our transformation, we can actually get on to applying it. So we need to get the matrix uniform location and set the matrix up for our shaders to use. So we do GL int transform location equals GL get uniform location. And we need to do our shader dot use no not dot program sorry and we just specify the transformation that we're using in our shader which is transform let me just move over so you can see it mm, what's that moaning about code object type gl uint aka on sign not a not a functional function pointer. Ah, sorry, it's, it's not a method. There we go. <laughs> My bad. I was wondering, can, 
because I literally did it before I did this video just to make sure the code was all working. Okay, okay. Now what we need to do is the final line of code, which is GL uni form matrix for float values and this takes a few parameters. First of all is the transform location. Transform location. Just put one here. I'm gonna put GL underscore false. If you want to know more about what these parameters are doing, I would recommend checking out learnopengeo.com and open.geo, which there will be links in the description because they explain a lot of this in more depth and it's something that will even make this video ridiculously long and it'll just be too overwhelming. So watch the video, read on learnopengeo.com and open.geo to learn more about it. Now finally, we just need to specify the transformation that we're using. So you do glm colon colon value underscore ptr and you just put transform. And you don't do it that way. Transform and now we're actually ready to run. So we can run a path route. I think it's meant to be a capital U uniform capital M yep so now if we run this we should have our image position in the bottom right oh, top right is that correct oh yeah I was meant to put negative I'm pretty sure I did let me just rerun this so this is this will be in the bottom right now and we've got our Super Mario rotating clockwise so if we were to change this value for example to a positive we'll have Super Mario rotating the other way so we got it rotating the other way let's put negative again because I prefer it this way and put a value of 50 and now let's see what sort of speed we get yeah it's probably a little too fast it's probably more trippy than practical so let's just keep it at negative five. It looked pretty decent. So yeah, this has been a very simple video of how to use the OpenGL math library, GLM, to handle vectors and matrix transformations. So you can actually apply transformations to objects in your application. So we'll be doing more of this sort of stuff in later videos. If you have any questions about how to link GLM to your project if you have any, any issues with that or you just come across this video and you haven't really watched the other videos feel free to message us at sonarlearning.co.uk there'll be a link in the description to that plus there will be a link in the description to the github page which has the source code from every video in this series if you like the video please give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and leave us a comment and if you didn't, feel free to leave some constructive criticism as usual. And thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.